Hi, Sunshine family. Lunacy's back. And we're here to read through the inmate manual from the Knox County Jail. There's been two messages, one an email and one a recorded phone call. Uh, both of them are on my channel. Both of them are uh, at the IUV as well uh, through BZ. <clears throat> and the general theme of both of these reports from Heather are the conditions in the jail and how they violate human rights. That's her message. And in digging into her message and inspecting it and respecting it, we're going to take a look at what the Knox County Jail says as far as the policies and procedures go for inmates and how they run their jail. All right. <clears throat> So this is the 2018 Knox County Sheriff's Office Inmate Handbook. Sheriff Jimmy J.J. Jones. That's a lot of J's. <clears throat> Jimmy Jones. All right, well, we've got a preface, general services and procedures, medical and dental care, support programs, inmate off offenses and sanctions, disciplinary proceedings, personal grievance procedures, classification slash inmate worker information, the Prison Rape Elimination Act, and sentence reduction credits. This was last revised on the 14th of March of 2018. Preface, the Knox County Sheriff's Office operates three correctional facilities. They are the Knox County Jail, 400 Main Avenue, Knoxville, Tennessee. That's KCJ as the abbreviations. The Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility, or the RDWDF, <clears throat> 5001 Maloneyville Road, Knoxville, Tennessee. And then the Knox County Work Release Center. <clears throat> or the KCWRC, that's 5109 Maloneyville Road, Knoxville, Tennessee. All mail intended for inmates should be mailed to the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility. This handbook is provided for you, <coughs> excuse me, provided for your use while incarcerated with the Knox County Sheriff's Office Corrections Division. This handbook is a basic guide and by no means is an all-inclusive document. The information provided will assist you in adjusting to confinement and help you gain a better understanding of correctional procedures. Additional information can be obtained from the classification, orientation, the inmate bulletin boards, and from correction staff. Updates or changes may be made to this handbook without prior not notice as the need arises. You will be required to pay a replacement for any county property or issued property defaced, damaged, destroyed, or lost. You may also be charged criminally. The replacement amount will be deducted from your inmate money account prior to your release. If you do not have funds in your account during this incarceration period, your account will automatically be checked each time you are incarcerated in Knox County until your debt is paid in full. Section 1, General Services and Procedures. Subsection A, Emergency Situations. During any emergency, you will follow all orders given by a staff member without question or delay. If you have a personal emergency, such as, but not limited to, a medical emergency, an assault of any nature, or suicidal, and then, and then they've got this 
they interrupt that list and they say, feeling lost, lonely, desperate, question mark. When it seems like there's no hope, there is help. If you feel trapped, if you feel you have no one to turn to, if you've been feeling down for a while, it is important to talk to someone. Isn't this amazing that this is, this is on the preface, like they're hitting this hard up front about suicide. And there's a reason for that. I only worked in a county jail for about four months. And during that time as a deputy in a county jail, uh, there were a few inmate deaths. There were a few suicides, uh, hanging, jumping off of a top tier. And there are plenty of fights. So the feelings of being lost, lonely, desperate, no hope, feeling trapped, well, that's what's going to happen in a jail. And, and it's just really a blatant observation. I want everyone to take that in, that, that this right here is what they're hitting you up front with in the inmate handbook that was revised just this year, a few months ago. If for whatever reason you feel you may want to harm yourself, please press your emergency button or go to your correction staff member. Ask to speak with a counselor, chaplain, or someone. We have a person you can speak to. We will listen and together we will work to find a way to help you. With help comes hope. Subsection B, Visitation. General Information Procedures. Knox County Correctional Facilities use video visitation as our only method of personal visits. Inmates may utilize kiosks or tablets located in the housing units to access these visits. A. Visitors may visit you externally by using their home computers to schedule external remote visits. Visitors need to schedule these visits one week prior to the date they wish to visit remotely with you. Visitors will need to create an account with the current vendor by visiting jailatm.com. After establishing an account, the visitor may schedule up to two 30-minute visits per week. The cost of each visit is $5.99 per 30-minute visit. Prior to the scheduled visit time, the visitor will log on to jailatm.com to access the visit. You will be informed to be at the kiosk or be provided a tablet for the scheduled visit. Upon arriving at the kiosk or getting your tablet, you will see the incoming call displayed on the screen. You need to log into your account and accept the visit. The visit will automatically disconnect at the end of 30 minutes or at any time either party chooses to click the end call icon. Visitors without access to computers may opt to visit you internally at no charge. This visit will be conducted at the Knox County Visitation Center located at 5109 Maloneyville Road. Visitors may call our visitation staff and request to schedule an internal visit. Internal visitors will need to bring their driver's license or state-issued identification card with them. The visitor must report to the Knox County Visitation Center 10 minutes prior to the scheduled visit to check in. Once checked in, the visitor will be directed to a kiosk where they will enter their identification into the kiosk. Then the visitor will choose your name from an alphabetical list to start the visit. You will be informed when you are needed at a kiosk or provided with a tablet for the scheduled visit. Upon arriving at the kiosk slash tablet, you will see the incoming call displayed on the screen. You will then log into your account and accept the visit. The visit will automatically disconnect at the end of 30 minutes or at any time either party chooses to click the end call icon. All video visits are recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. Inmates will be charged 19 cents per minute for video visitation. You are required to wear your full issued uniform at all times during a visit. 
Visitors will be required to be fully clothed in proper attire during the visit. No pornographic or sexual activities will be allowed during the visit. Any violation of this rule will result in your being immediately terminated and you will receive disciplinary sanctions from the disciplinary board to include but not <clears throat> be limited to loss of visitation, privileges, and or disciplinary segregation. The person visiting you will have their visitation privileges suspended indefinitely. You know, it's really interesting that they only allow video visitation. At the county jail I worked at, uh, there were in-person visitations, but they were separated by a glass partition, and they had to talk uh, through a, a little telephone. Um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about video visitation only. Um, I feel like that... <laughs> That can that used with some of the video technology out there, the live video rendering that can be used to to fake people uh, on the fly uh, it is pretty far along, and that could. I, I'm just imagining what an absolute mess that would be if that was used to uh, to fake visitations of of inmates that were locked up. I'm really, I guess what I'm seeing here is, hmm, there's been a lot of changes in technology since I was a deputy working in a jail, and, and it's just, has some interesting ramifications. When utilizing kiosks or tablets for video visitation within the housing units, general population inmates at the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility and the, the Work Release Center will be permitted a maximum of one hour of visitation per week. <clears throat> this will be split into two scheduled 30-minute visits. Any change to these hours must be approved by the facility commander or his or her designee. Inmates at the KCJ, Knox County Jail, may visit at any time during scheduled recreation. Inmates may also utilize tablets in the housing units for unlimited video calls. Inmates will be charged 19 cents a minute for video calls. Unli That's interesting. Inmates may also utilize tablets in housing units for unlimited video calls. Tablets may only be utilized in your assigned cell or bunk. When utilizing the kiosk visitation at the work release center, children under 18 years of age are allowed to visit. However, a parent or legal guardian must accompany them during the entire visit, unless prior approval of the facility commander or his or her designee has been obtained. Visits with your attorney are conducted at the facility where you are assigned. You can visit your attorney between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. Attorney visits during any other times must have approval from the facility commander or his or her designee. Attorneys have the ability to use video visitation that will be considered privileged and will not be recorded. Your attorney must contact the facility administrative staff to set up this type of communication prior to utilizing this service. Visitation hours. Mornings 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Evenings 4 p.m. to 6 and 7 to 9. And it's broken down a daily schedule here by the units. Knox County Jail visitations are available seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and from 2.30 to 9 p.m. Work Release Center visitations are available 6 p.m. to 10. Handicap visits will be conducted at the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility via video kiosk in the lobby. Visitors will need to call the facility to schedule these visits. Note, the Corrections Division reserves the rights to suspend or change visitation hours at any time for the safety and security of the facilities. Inmate Communications, General Information. 
Newly admitted arrestees will be allowed to make one three-minute local telephone call during the admissions process. There will be one additional free three-minute telephone call available to you. Any subsequent calls will be subject to charge. That's an amazing separation right there. You're only allowed two three-minute phone calls uh, before they start charging you. That's off the charts. <clears throat> Although you may not receive telephone calls, you may make outgoing calls. Telephones are available for use in each housing area day room. In order to make personal telephone calls from your housing area, you must use the PIN numbers issued to you when you are booked. This PIN number is located on your property receipt. Each time you are booked, you will be issued a new PIN number and it will appear on your property receipt. It will be your responsibility to keep this receipt or remember your personal number. Personal identification numbers will not be shared between inmates. Anyone caught doing so will have his or her telephone privileges suspended and disciplinary action will be taken. Instructions for the use of the telephone will be provided when you pick up the handset. Follow the voice prompts to complete your call. Additional information will be located on the inmate bulletin boards near the inmate telephone area. Three-way calling is not permitted. Anyone caught doing this will have his or her telephone privileges suspended and disciplinary action will be taken. Abusive telephone equipment will not be tolerated. Damage to county property will result in disciplinary and criminal action. All inmates are required to use courtesy when using the telephones. Any attempt to control the telephone or to harass the called party will result in the suspension of your telephone privileges and disciplinary action taken against you. Time limits are placed on all telephone calls to allow all inmates access to the telephone. All telephones are subject to being recorded. The current call rates from the inmate phones, uh, if you got a local call, $2.85 per call, For, I don't know what interlata, interstate calls. Hmm. Out of state calls are 21 cents a minute. International calls, $1 per call plus 95 cents per minute. Inmates having an order of protection against them or any court order restricting communications with a victim are not to communicate with the petitioner slash victim. If you violate this rule, you will have disciplinary action taken against you and will be subject to additional criminal charges. Emergency phone calls. Should your family need to contact you in an emergency, they must contact the facility in which you are housed. Once the emergency is verified, arrange arrangements will be made for you to contact your family. <clears throat> Legal calls. Inmates access the public defender's office by dialing 333 from any PIN phone. Inmates who are unable to reach their attorney by using the provided PIN telephones may submit a request for a special attorney telephone call from any pod kiosk or inmate tablet. Once approved by the supervisor, the pod officer will make arrangements for the inmate to contact his or her attorney from a staff telephone. All legal calls will be entered into IMS. If you wish to report information regarding a crime, you may dial 444 to access the crime tips reporting line. That's, you know, if you want to be a narc. Inmates housed in a medical unit will be afforded both legal and personal phone calls. Upon request from kiosk or tablet, legal calls will be arranged as soon as possible. Staff telephones. Inmates are not allowed to use staff telephones without permission. Well, they don't say anything about, they just, <laughs> TDD telephones or telecommunications device for the death video relay service, they, they don't say anything about that. They just have a title. They don't have a number eight, it just goes right from seven to nine. That's kind of interesting. In accordance with ADA or Americans with Disabilities Act, 
the mandates therein. The Knox County Sheriff Office utilizes both video relay and TTY services in order to provide tele, tele, <laughs> excuse me, telecommunications access for the hearing impaired. Notify a staff member if you need these services. How, how weird. Six, the title is staff telephones, and then they've got the little subject about what they want to say about staff telephones. Seven is a title, but then nine, <laughs> I don't know, who edited this? All right, intercoms. Intercoms are for emergency use only. Non-emergency use will result in disciplinary action against you. Vandalism. If you are caught damaging any facility, communications device, disciplinary and criminal action will be taken against you. Subsection D, personal mail electronic messaging. General information. All personal mail and electronic messages are subject to censorship and inspection for contraband or any other substantial government interest unrelated to the su suppression of expression, i.e., detecting escape plans which constitute a threat to facility security and or the well-being of staff, public, and or other inmates. You'll be notified if any of your mail is withheld. So that's, that's good to know. So the email that I sent to Hat J that I still haven't gotten a reply back from, uh, according to this, they're supposed to tell her if any, of my, if any of that mail is withheld. And so I just haven't received anything from her at all. But perhaps she wasn't able to get any word out from everything that's going on in her experience over there. Two, outgoing mail. While incarcerated, though, there will be no limit to the amount of mail you generate. However, inmate-to-inmate -inmate correspondence will not be allowed without written approval from the facility commander. Letter writing materials for outgoing mail are available through the commissary. Current U.S. Postal Service rates apply. All outgoing personal mail is subject to censorship. Postcards or envelopes with any type of profanity or obscene drawings on them will be returned to you. Mail addressed to any Knox County court will be considered in-house mail and postage will not be required. <clears throat> Your name, I guess that's the identification number and return address must be placed on all outgoing mail. The return address for the Knox County Correctional Facilities are as follows. Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility, your name, hyphen, your identification number. Must include full legal name. 5001 Maloneyville Road, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37918. All outgoing mail must be given to the pod officer for delivery to the mail clerk. All mailings will be delivered to the USPS the next working day, excluding holidays and weekends. Incoming personal mail. Regardless of the facility in which you are housed, all mail is to be addressed to the Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility. Your name, hyphen, identification number, 5001 Maloneyville Road, Knoxville, Tennessee. Mail will be delivered Monday through Friday during designated time periods. You may receive five photographs in the mail. However, they must meet the following standards. No photographs will be larger than four by six. No photographs will be framed or matted. No Polaroid or instant type pictures. No pornographic or suggestive pictures, drawings, or materials. No photographs displaying gang signs or symbols. No display of illicit criminal activity or, or criminal activity. Incoming mail may re be rejected if the facility commander or his or her designee deems it could reasonably be considered to, one, be an attempt to incite violence based on race, religion, sex, creed, or nationality. Two, Advocate, facilitate, or otherwise present a risk of lawlessness, violence, anarchy, or rebellion against government authority, facility staff, or other inmates. Three, be an attempt to incite disobedience towards law enforcement officials or staff. 
4, be an attempt to give instructions for the manufacturing or the use of intoxicants, weapons, explosives, drugs, drug paraphernalia, or other unlawful articles or substances, or any other items deemed as contraband. 5. Contain plans to escape, unauthorized entry into any correctional facility, or information or maps which might aid in an escape attempt. 6. Contain information relating to security threat group activity or the use of codes and or symbols associated with security threat groups. 7. Sexually explicit material or material which features nudity which by its nature or content poses a threat to security, good order, or discipline of the institution or facilities or facilitates criminal activity. E. Knox County Sheriff's Office will not attempt will not accept any mail from or to inmate to inmate. If the mail is found to come from prisons or other jails or from any source of inmate to inmate, this mail will be denied unless authorization was approved by the facility commander prior to delivery. Other mail items not permitted. One, glue, paint, whiteout, or any item in liquid form and or any foreign substance not identifiable. <clears throat> Address labels, stickers, and or items physically attached. Greeting cards. If mail items are considered contraband and considered illegal by law, they will be forwarded to the appropriate law enforcement agency. You will be notified in writing if your mail is rejected. Rejected mail appeals. If your mail is rejected, you may appeal the rejection within 14 working days of receipt. You may request an inmate rejected mail appeal form from any staff member. Completed forms will be forwarded to the facility commander. The sender of the rejected mail may also submit an appeal in writing via the United States Postal Service to the facility commander within 14 working days of receipt of the rejection notice. The facility commander designee will make his or her decision within 14 working days of the receipt of the appeal. A copy of the final disposition will be sent to the mailroom supervisor, inmate recipient, and sender. Legal privileged mail. Inmates are permitted to send and receive sealed letters to specified class of persons and organizations, including but not limited to the following. Courts, council, state, and local officials, corrections administrators or grievance systems, and members of the paroling authority. Staff in the presence of an inmate will be allowed to inspect outgoing privileged mail for contraband before it is sealed. Mail from the specified class or persons and organizations will be open to only inspect for contraband and only in the presence of an inmate, unless waived in writing or in circumstances which may indicate contamination. Once opened and inspected, the inmate may keep only the contents of the envelope and not the envelope itself. However, the inmate may tear off and keep a portion of the envelope on which the return address is affixed. You will not receive your mail without your facility issued identification. Wow, I remember mail call from working in the jail and uh, there were plenty of Plenty of attempts to get drugs in in the mail, and the most commonly utilized way is for the drugs to be dissolved in some into into some sort of a liquid, and the the paper in which the letter was written on was dipped into this uh, liquid, and then it was allowed to dry, and then uh, then you just tear up the letter and and eat it bit by bit to get the the drugs into your system. I mean, that stuff goes on, and and it was a lot more prevalent than I would have ever imagined. And for that reason, we always had to wear gloves on our hands when we were inspecting mail. It, It was just a mess. It was really, it was my least favorite job working in that jail. All right, section five, electronic messaging. Inmates may send and receive an unlimited number of messages from kiosks and tablets located in each housing area. Excuse me, my cat seems to be awfully vocal right now. What's up, sweet? Come here. Come here. Come on. Hi. Come here. 
Huh? What's up? Ra? Yeah, hi. I know, all right. You be quiet, huh? Be quiet so I can finish. Uh, okay, well, this one is going to keep doing this until I have a little... Uh, uh, you just need to be petted and brushed. All right, we got to brush her for a little bit so that she quiets down. All right, we will be back more or with more of this. We're on page 11 at Electronic Messaging. Uh, if you have any love lighter links for me, send them to lunacy at protonmail.com. And peace out. And let's everybody hold a high vibration for... Uh, all sides, all all parties that are inside any any county jail, especially the Knox County jails, <clears throat> um, we ask Grace to help us unwind this mess for the highest and best purposes of everyone involved in the easiest, most graceful, peaceful fashion. <laughs>